Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 27th of January 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles we will be going through today. Now let's take up the first article for our discussion. Look at this text and context article here. This article is taken from the Hindu newspaper dated 23rd January 2023. As we are constantly saying that on some days if you don't cover some important news articles due to time constraints then we will cover it in upcoming days. This is the exact reason why I chose this article today. I chose this article because this is very much useful for you as it is related to gig and platform workers. In this discussion, we are going to see about gig and platform workers. See the question may come in the UPSC mains examination relating to the issues faced by gig workers. So pay attention to this discussion. Now coming to the article. As the title says, this article is related to gig and platform workers. This article primarily says that India has to learn lessons from China regarding the rights of the gig gun platform workers. Why was this topic in news? See, on January 20, food tech delivery platform Swiggy announced that it was laying off 380 employees due to challenging macroeconomic conditions. This move by the Swiggy portrays that there is no job and social security for those who are employed in such online delivery platforms. Okay. There are also several petitions filed in the Supreme Court on this regard. For example, on September 20, 2021, on behalf of the gig workers, the Indian Federation of App-Based Transport Workers filed a public interest litigation. The petition has asked the central government to declare gig workers and platform workers as unorganized workers. If these workers are declared as unorganized workers, they would come under the purview of the Unorganized Workers Social Security Act 2008. So, they will get some benefits on par with other employees who are included in that act. In short, the petition demands social security benefits from food delivery platforms such as Zomato and Swiggy and taxi aggregator apps such as Ola and Uber. Okay? Now, what is the situation in China? See, during last September, China has taken many steps ahead with regards to rights of the gig workers. Owing to public pressure and the resultant government action, two of China's food delivery platforms such as Meituan and Eli.me committed to end the practice of forcing workers to register as independent businesses. Earlier, this practice has helped these platforms to evade responsibilities as employers. Due to public pressure, finally, the Chinese government has accepted to safeguard the rights and the interests of the gig workers. So. The Chinese government has conducted talks with some online firms such as food delivery platforms and the talks had ended with fruitful outcomes. So the platform will now be required to offer written agreements to food delivery men and other such workers. This ensures better working conditions for the gig workers in China. This is the lesson that India has to learn from the Chinese regarding the rights of the gig gun platform workers. This is about the article given here. Now, in this discussion, today we are going to understand who are gig workers, who are platform workers, then we will see the issues faced by them and finally we will see some solutions to address the mentioned issues. This is the plan for today. Before getting into the discussion, I have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion. You can go through it. Now let's start. Let's start with the term gig workers. Gig workers are independent contractors or freelancers who typically do short term work. The work may be project based or part time based. The examples of gig workers include freelance writers, online tutors, digital marketing experts, web developers and so on. See in India section 2 class 35 of the code of the social security 2022 defines gig workers. It says that a gig worker means a person who performs work or participates in a work agreement and earns from such activities outside of traditional employer-employee relationship. In simpler terms, gig workers are the workers who do short-term work and they have no standard work agreement with their employers. Okay? Now moving on to platform workers. By hearing the term platform workers, you might assume that platform workers are those who are working on the roadside platforms. Right? Your assumption is wrong. See, a platform worker is defined as a worker who is working for an organization that provides specific services using an online platform. For example, we can say Swiggy full delivery executives as platform workers because 
they are doing such work for an organization that provides services online here the organization is nothing but the swiggy in india section 2 class 60 and section 2 class 61 of the code of social security 2020 defines platform work and platform workers respectively according to section 2 class 60 platform work means a work agreement outside of the traditional employer employee relationship in which organizations or individuals use an online platform to access other organization or individuals to solve specific problems or to provide specific services or any such activities which may be notified by the central government in exchange for payment simultaneously section 2 class 61 defines a platform worker it says that a worker engaged or undertaking platform work as mentioned in section 2 class 60 is defined as a platform worker in simpler terms a platform worker is none other than a worker who is working for an organization that provides specific services using an online platform okay having understood the basics now we will see the issues faced by the platform and the gig workers the first and foremost issue is high stress as we all know for the gig or platform worker there is no regular wage there is also no job security guaranteed to them see these factors yield high stress to the gig workers the second issue is related to social security there is no defined social security available for the gig or platform workers generally they will not receive health care and retirement benefits as availed by the regular workers it make them feel insecure for example if any medical emergencies happen to a gig worker how will they manage this is a big question right so a lack of social security is another important concern thirdly lack of workplace entitlements see generally when a gig worker got employed the contract is signed between the platform owner and the gig worker those contracts have details about the rights of the employee against the employer sometimes these contracts are of discriminatory in nature because there is a chance of denying the employee the access to any workplace entitlement this also provides serious issue to the gig worker so this is the third issue the final issue is the stress due to performance evaluation see many platforms are providing wage to the gig worker based on the task and the subsequent performance this requirement also puts more stress on the workers because they have to work beyond their capacity to get the correct wage so these are all some of the issues faced by the platform or the gig worker in india now we will see what would be the possible solution to address these issues firstly the government should provide social security benefits such as health care benefits and insurance benefits to gig workers this has to be done by enacting separate law in the parliament it will ensure social security to the gig workers secondly government should provide adequate skill development to the young workforce this will help them get better job rather than relying on these unsecured jobs thirdly as done by china the indian government should also mandate the online platforms to offer written agreements to the gig workers this would ensure better work condition for the gig workers in india apart from the government said the online platform should also have to take responsibility the platforms have to make provisions for paid sick leave health access and insurance for the gig workers these are some possible solutions that the government and the online platforms can take to address the issues faced by the gig and platform workers so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion first we saw about the contents in the news article in that we saw the lessons that india can learn from the chinese decision after that we saw the definition for gig worker and platform worker as provided in the social security code 2020 after that we saw the issues faced by the gig and platform workers and finally the possible solutions to address the issues so that's all regarding this discussion now let us conclude this and take up the next news article look at this news article this news article talks about aditya l1 mission according to the news article the indian space research organization is planning to launch the aditya l1 mission by july or june this year since aditya l1 is india's first space mission to observe the sun and the solar corona you must know about it so in this news article discussion let us look into the details of the mission now let's start 
द रीसन बिहेंड सन्स कोरोना गेटिंग हीटेड टू वेरी हई टेम्परेचर इज स्टिल अ मिस्ट्री टू आल द सोलर फिजिस्ट सी हियर कोरोना इज द ऊट मोस्ट लेयर आफ द सन्स अट्मास्पियर सन्स कोरोना इज मेड अफ प्लास्मा सन्स कोरोना लाइज अबोव द सन्स क्रोमोस्पियर अंड एक्सटेंड्स मिलियन आफ किलोमीटर्स इन टू ऊटर स्पेस Normally, we cannot observe sun's corona, and we can observe sun's corona only during total solar eclipse. Okay, now coming back. See, initially, the Aditya One mission was planned to observe only the corona of the sun. The mission involved placing a 400 kilogram satellite carrying one payload in 800 kilometer low Earth orbit. Later, ISRO planned to place the satellite in the halo orbit around the Lagrangian point. Here. Halo orbit is the orbit that surrounds the sun. See, this Lagrangian point provides the advantage of observing the sun continuously without any disturbance. Hence, the mission was renamed as Aditya L1 mission. Okay. Here comes the question: What is this Lagrangian point? These are sweet spots between Earth's orbit. Sweet spots are nothing but a place that is optimal for observing a certain desirable effect or result, and such a point is Lagrangian point. at the lagrangian point the pull of the gravity from the earth cancels out the pull of the gravity from the sun anything placed at these points will feel equally pulled towards earth and the sun and will revolve with the earth around the sun so we can say that lagrangian points are specific locations where a satellite will stay stationary relative to the earth as the satellite and the earth revolves around the sun okay there are five lagrangian points in the earth sun system L1 is positioned above the day side of the earth. L2 is positioned above the night side of the earth. L3 is on the other side of the sun, opposite to the earth. L4 and L5 are 60 degrees ahead and behind the earth in the same orbit. Okay? You can see all these details in the image given here. Of these five Lagrangian points, only two points that is L4 and L5 are very stable. A satellite that is placed in L4 and L5 requires minimum input to appear stable okay but a satellite in the other three points that is l1 l2 and l3 is like a ball balanced at the peak of a steep hill any slight disturbance will push the satellite out of the lagrangian point so a satellite placed at l1 l2 or l3 needs constant adjustment to stay balanced and to be in place remember this point okay see despite this factor india has chosen to place the aditya satellite in the lagrangian point l1 of the sun earth system this is because l1 is about 1.5 million kilometer from the earth and the satellite placed in the halo orbit around the l1 point has the major advantage of continually viewing the sun without any disturbance like eclipse this will provide a greater advantage of observing the solar activities and its effects on space in real time now coming back to the article the spacecraft carries seven payloads to observe the photosphere chromosphere and the outermost layer of the sun that is the corona using electromagnetic and magnetic field detectors the payloads along with their capabilities are given here for your reference you can go through it okay see the aditya l1 mission will help us understand the problem of coronal heating coronal mass ejection solar flare activities and its characteristics dynamics of space weather propagation of particles and fields okay that is all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw all the major points related to aditya l1 mission and we also discussed about the lagrangian points in space okay with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article see this article here this article is talking about the misconception between the term gaming and gambling so in this discussion we are going to see why there is a misconception between the terms gambling and gaming then we will understand about the difference between gaming and gambling and finally we will see some issues associated with online gaming and online gambling now let's start with the basics Online gaming can be broadly classified into two types. They are game of chance and games of luck. If you take games of chance, the outcome is mainly driven by luck. So, one would engage in a game of chance by putting money on something with an intent to win a bigger sum. This is the exact reason why games of chance are otherwise termed as gambling. Now coming to games of skill. See in games of skill the success depends principally on the knowledge training 
एक्सपर्टाइज एंड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द प्लेयर नो दैट दिस गेम्स ऑफ स्किल इज जनरली टर्म डस गेमिंग रिसेंटली द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी हैज रिलीज द ड्राफ्ट अमेंडमेंट टू द आई टी इंटरमीडियरी गई लाइन्स एंड डिजिटल मीडिया एथिक्स कोड रूल्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन दिस इज टू रेगुलेट ऑनलाइन गेमिंग द ड्राफ्ट अमेंडमेंट हैज द प्रोविजन ऑफ के ओ सी नॉम्स सम वीडियो गेम कंपनीज दट प्रोवाइड स्किल गेम्स आर अपोजिंग दीज रूल्स दे आर ऑफ द ओपिनियन दैट अ सेपरेट फ्रेमवर्क शुड बी एस्टाब्लिश फॉर द स्किल बेस्ड गेम्स एंड दे मस्ट नॉट बी क्लब्ड टूगेदर विद द गेम्स ऑफ चांस दिस इज बिकॉज देर इज नो क्लियर कट डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन द टर्म्स गेमिंग एंड गैम्बलिंग इन द न्यूली ड्राफ्टेड आई टी रूल्स सम कंपनीज आर सेंग दैट ब्रिंगिंग ऑल ऑनलाइन गेम्स अंडर अ सिंगल फ्रेमवर्क माइ क्रिएट मिसकनसम्शन अमॉंग द यूसर्स दट इज वेदर दे शुड कंप्ले विथ के ओ सी नॉम्स आर नॉट दर फोर सम वीडियो गेम कंपनीज दट प्रोवाइड स्किल गेम्स आर डिमांडिंग द गवर्मेंट फॉर अ सपरेट फ्रेमवर्क अस ई मेन्शन डिया लेयर गेमिंग आर गेम्स ऑफ स्किल रिक्वयर नॉलेज एंड स्किल टू प्ले दट इज द गेम प्ले इनवाल कमिंग अप विथ सोल्यूशन टू द चैलेंजस् पोस्ट बै द डेवलपर्स ऑफ द गेम For example, we can take PUBG. For playing PUBG with our friends, you need skills alone. You do not need money to play games with your friends. Whereas in gambling or games of chance, the game mostly relies on probability and luck. So, one has to stake money on the game of chance or to bet on sporting events. That is, there is a monetary transaction where the winner is bound to gain financially. For example, we can take Dream Eleven. Here. the skill of the player does not matter it is the luck of the player that matters more okay this is the difference between gambling and gaming now we will see the issues associated with online gaming and online gambling the first issue is addiction technological advancement also has its ill effects see earlier to play online games we had to go to the internet center and it required lots of effort like we need to get money from our parents to pay to the internet center then we need to tell some lies to our parents to go play the game but right now we don't have to go anywhere in order to have access to online gambling or online gaming it is literally at our fingertips this makes the users particularly the students more vulnerable as they spend more time playing the video games this in turn affects the studies of the students the first issue leads to our second issue which is lack of skills as i already said because of online gaming students will tend to spend less time on other activities so in the long run this will affect their skill development finally the third issue is monetary loss see in case of online gambling the probability of users to win money is very low and in most cases users lose their hard earned money and this affects them mentally and sometimes it can even push people to suicide so these are some of the issues associated with online gaming and online gambling now let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article now for our next discussion let us take up this text and context article here it says that japan is expected to start flushing 1.25 million tons of waste water from the fukushima nuclear power plant into the pacific ocean this year and this is done as part of the 76 billion dollar project to decommission the facility this is about the article given here in this context let us see the impacts of decommissioning the project and we will also see what can be done but before that the syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here you can go through it first of all let us see little bit about fukushima daiichi nuclear power plant in japan see in march 2011 an earthquake of 9 magnitude caused a tsunami to flood the Fukushima nuclear power plant and the tsunami water damaged the power plant's diesel generators due to the damage to the diesel generators there was loss of power and this suspended the coolant supply to the reactors at the facility know that the tsunami disabled backup systems also and because of these damages only radioactive materials leaked from the reactor pressure vessels and exploded in the facilities upper levels this caused the exposure of radioactive materials to the ambient air water soil and local population so subsequently the wind also carried the radioactive materials which was thrown up into the air and after these incidents the power plant and its surrounding area became uninhabitable 
This is about the current condition of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Now, the decommissioning project mentioned in the article involves discharging of the waste water of the nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. So, what is the problem in this? The main problem is that the water that was used to cool the reactor contains radioactive isotopes from the damaged reactors. So, the water itself is radioactive. Now, Japan is saying that it will release this waste water into the Pacific Ocean over the next 30 years. Now, you may think the water can be treated before letting into the Pacific Ocean, right? Yes, it can be treated. As a matter of fact, it has already been treated. According to the Tokyo Electric Power Company, that is TEPCO, the water has been treated to remove most radioactive isotopes. See, this company, that is TEPCO, is the company that operated the Fukushima facility. The company is saying that the water is according to the safety standards. But there are several problems in this wastewater discharge, despite the fact that it is treated. Now we will see the problems one by one. Firstly, the safety limit is that the water should have 148th of as much tritium as the permitted limit. Suppose, let us assume the permitted limit of tritium is 40%. Then the water should contain only 1% of tritium to ensure that it is according to the safety limit. TEPCO has not removed the tritium from the water because the process is very difficult and costly. The problem here is that tritium is easily absorbed by the bodies of living creatures and can be rapidly distributed via blood. This is the first issue. Secondly, according to experts, there is no known threshold below which radiations are considered safe. So, any discharge of radioactive material will increase the risk of cancer and causes other known health impacts. Thirdly, the affected water is expected to poison the fish. So, people should avoid eating fish caught in the vicinity of the discharge point. Going by the proverb prevention is better than cure, South Korea has already banned seafood imported from Fukushima in 2013 itself. And fourthly, as per the Koyudo news report in 2018, other radionucleides are there in the water which are not removed by TEPCO's treatment process. These includes isotopes of ruthenium and plutonium. Know that these isotopes can persist for longer in the body of marine creature and on the sea floor. Fifthly, Pacific Ocean is not just Japan's backyard. Other countries such as China, South Korea and Taiwan have also expressed concerns over the Japanese plan. Interestingly, the US government has supported this plan of China. And we don't know why they are thinking like that. Maybe US wants China to suffer by making Japan release the contaminated water in the Pacific Ocean. We don't know the exact rational behind you were supporting Japanese edition. Okay, this is the fifth problem. Now moving on. Sixthly, see all nuclear accidents have global repercussion. Particularly, the Fukushima accident turned the public opinion against the nuclear power worldwide. In Japan itself, the accident reduced the nuclear power's contribution to electricity generation from 30% before 2011 to 5% in 2022. This is very bad, right? See, currently in Earth, the major problem is climate change. And climate change is caused due to emission of greenhouse gases. And as we all know, nuclear power production does not emit any greenhouse gases. So, accidents like Fukushima, by turning the public opinion against nuclear power, is affecting our goal to combat climate change. Okay? See, considering the problems that we just discussed now, the option of storage was considered by Japan. I already said that Japan has declared the area around Fukushima as uninhabitable, right? So it was considered that the water can be stored in this region itself until it reaches its half-life. Here half-life is the time taken by the radioactive material to be halved through radioactive decay. So if the water is stored until the material reaches its half-life, then it can be less radioactive, right? But in the year 2020, experts from the International Atomic Energy Agency visited the Fukushima plant. They said that the discharge is technically a feasible option. Besides, the TEPCO is also running out of room for water tanks. Lastly, the action of discharging wastewater is justified by saying that nuclear plants all over the world regularly release water into large water bodies which contains trace amounts of radionucleates. Okay, so that's all regarding this discussion. 
In this discussion, we saw the problems associated with Japan's plan to release wastewater from Fukushima power plant. So with this, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Take a look at this editorial article. This article talks about the need for Holocaust education in India. So in our discussion today, let us see what is Holocaust, the reasons that led to Holocaust and finally the need for Holocaust education in India. First, what is Holocaust? The word Holocaust comes from the Greek word which means burnt offering. Even before the Second World War, the word was sometimes used to describe a death of large group of people. But since 1945, it has become almost synonymous with the murder of European Jews during the Second World War. So, the Holocaust was a period in history in the time of World War II. During this period, millions of Jews were murdered because of who they were. The killings were organized by German's Nazi party under Adolf Hitler. Due to its nature, we can tell that Holocaust is an example of genocide. Here genocide means the act of killing a large group of people usually because of their nationality, race or religion. A number of reasons led to Holocaust. Let us see them one by one. The first such reason is Hitler's assumption that German race was superior. Under Hitler's rule, the German people assumed that their race were superior because they considered themselves to the original inheritance of the Aryan race. So, due to this superiority feeling, they started indiscriminately killing the Jews. Secondly, the Nazi party blamed the Jews for Germany's poor economic condition and Germany's loss in the World War I. The third reason is anti-Semitism. See, Jews in Europe were rich compared to the rest of the population. The Nazis were jealous of the Jewish people's financial success. The jealousy later turned into hostility against the Jewish people. This resulted in the feeling of anti-Semitism and this anti-Semitism only fueled the Holocaust event. So these are the reasons that led to Holocaust. Currently, Holocaust is in news because today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. See, many years have passed since the Holocaust. Even today, there are incidents that shows that anti-Semitism is still prevalent all around the world. And this is why the author of this article says that educating people about Holocaust is important. The author feels that we must educate people rather than trying to erase the past. Only by learning about the past, people can empathize and prevent such things from happening in the future. See, currently in India, there is an increase in religious conflict. By learning about Holocaust, the Indian youth can learn the importance of tolerance because it is the intolerance of one man by the name of Hitler that resulted in the catastrophe like Holocaust. We have so much to learn from Holocaust which will make our countrymen better global citizens. So that's all regarding this discussion. To know more about Holocaust, watch movies like Life is Beautiful and Schindler's List. I am very sure that after watching these movies, you will surely turn into a better human being. With this, we have come to the end of the video. If you like our video, like, comment and share it with your friends. For more updates regarding UPSC preparation, subscribe to Shankara Ace Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.